because of that the the money tap kind of got turned off and like I had to cancel my album tour to cancel all my festivals that year and all my promo and I basically just like for the six months before my album came out I just sat in my flat doing absolutely nothing and I got an email from someone saying that Kylie Minogue wanted to use one of my songs yeah. um, crazy and um, I, my I like grew up listening to Kylie that was like a huge deal and the song actually ended up not coming out but that the guy who emailed me is like my manager now and I just saw my phone like just like start flashing like really intensely yeah. like getting loads of notifications I was like what is happening turns out that like Taylor Swift had had tweeted me about my EP I was like oh my god um literally cried called my called my publisher at like one in the morning <laughs> I can't believe this happened. I'm so sorry for waking you up, but like, I need to tell you. And then, yeah, like, um, three days later, I got an email saying, Taylor's invited you to be one of the openers for the London show. Lauren Engels, Head Rock Talk today. I'm here with another Lauren, Lauren Aquilina. Great name, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so you're originally born in Bristol? Yes. But correct. your parents are from Malta? Yeah, my dad is Maltese, um, which is where my surname comes from. Mm. And um, I've been like going to Malta every year since I was born. Oh, I wow. absolutely love it there. It's so beautiful. Um, but my mum's British. Okay. So. so what made your dad move to the UK? He moved when he was like six years old. Mm -hmm. um, so his, I think his, my grandfather like got a job and um, they just all moved over. So he's, he's like pretty much British as well at this point. But mm -hmm. um, most of his family have moved back to Malta now. So he's like the only one oh. left. Yeah. Well, what does your dad do? He sells air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> he has like an air conditioning company. <laughs> How about your mom? Uh, my mom works in the government. Oh. I like literally don't know like her exact job title, so I always yeah. say to people, I'm like, she could be a spy, and I like just don't know. But but you haven't asked her, or she did? she's like no, really. She's, iffy. I mean, she's definitely not a spy. <laughs> like as far as I know, she could be. You know. Um, but yeah, she's been she's been in the Ministry of Defense for like mm -hmm. thirty years or something. So. Yeah. And when she was pregnant with you, she was playing a lot of like classical music already, right? Yeah, she was like playing me music every day. I think she read somewhere that like it helps with like baby's brain function yeah. or something. So she would play me like Mozart and shit when mm -hmm. I was like in the womb. Um, so, I mean, she, neither of my parents are musical, but my mom absolutely loves music and definitely like put that love into me mm. from a very, very young age. Does she do instruments as well or? No, she doesn't play any instruments. Um, I like had a fascination with pianos. Yeah, you started sort of young. Kid. Yeah. And like anytime I saw a piano, I would just like run up to it and like just bash it. <laughs> um, and then when I was like eight, I asked my mom if I could have piano lessons. Mm -hmm. and she was a single mom at the time. So my parents divorced when I was like four. Oh, so you don't remember it much? No, not really. Yeah. I remember them like telling me weirdly, but then like after that, I don't really remember what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, she like, she heard that I wanted piano lessons and she actually started working extra hours oh, so that so I, she could pay for them, which is like, literally the nicest thing yeah. ever like that changed my life so mm -hmm. started very young for sure yeah and then what was it when you were 13 you started singing or before that I think I was like always singing but I think like around 12 13 was when I sort of decided that nothing was going to stop me from doing it mm -hmm. um and that I had like my sights set on getting a record deal and being in music full time um so that was when I started like writing properly and like learning about the music industry and what you needed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I was just I was like completely obsessed with it. You were also doing like theater performances in school, right? Yeah, was I was like or? I was a proper musical yeah. theater kid. Um, 
I we did like Macbeth the musical, yeah. <laughs> and um, and I was in some other like school shows, and I went to theatre school. Um, and did that for a while. Theater school, as in like during high school, or what? Yeah, what I used to go that? on the weekends. Oh, okay. And do like extra theater school. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, but the thing is, like, I can't really dance at all. <laughs> um, that's actually an understatement. Like, I'm so bad at dancing. Um, so that I don't think that was ever going to be my thing. Mm -hmm. And also, I just like really loved writing so much, and that was something you couldn't do, like, if you were in. The West End or on Broadway, so um, I think when I was about like 14, 15, I stopped doing that and started focusing more on like pop songwriting mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, just transferred all my love into that. Yeah, but did it click to you to just be an actress? Um, I don't think I was just like I loved music so much mm -hmm. that and I loved like being creative, and I was actually writing songs from so young as well that that was just like in my blood and that was like all I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. How did you realize that you could be a singer though? Because you didn't really have like people around you who were able to make it their career. No, I didn't like, I didn't know anybody in the music industry. Um, I started like posting YouTube videos. Yeah. When I, well, I did my first open mic night when I was 13. And my mom was there with like her like massive camcorder, you know, that like every yeah. parent has the like massive camcorder. She filmed me singing like a Lady Gaga cover. And then when we got home, she was like, you should put this on YouTube. And I was like, no way. <laughs> like I would get bullied at school so now, hard. How many years ago is it? She's pretty open about like putting stuff online. Yeah, she like, was. Most parents are like. Yeah, I mean, this was like 10 years ago. Damn. Um, and she was like, just cool with it. So, um. She encouraged me to do it and we did it and then didn't like blow up or anything mm -hmm. but it encouraged me to start like filming myself at home with that same camcorder. I used to like make a pile of books on my <laughs> windowsill and then put the camcorder on top and then like film myself playing piano and singing like really badly probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and slowly I just like started to build up followers um, until I released my first EP. Mm -hmm. And be your manager, the first one found you through those, those yeah, videos. Yeah, my first yeah. manager found me on YouTube um, and we started working together. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we like made the first EP and it just did way better than we thought it was gonna do. Yeah, so like, were you just, how are you even like doing all this? Like the recording, like, after school or how was it working out at such a young age? I was doing it um, in the school holidays but I was also like skipping school <laughs> to do it. Um, and your mom was chill with that? Yeah I think she like what was so good about her was that because she feels like I, I know she wishes that she had like maybe like found more hobbies and like passions in life at a young age so she always put it into me and my brother that like we should just do whatever we want and like find something that we're passionate about and just go for it. And I think because she saw how passionate I was about music, she just wanted me to do mm, it. I love that. Yeah. Um, so she, I mean, she probably wasn't that chill with it. She definitely wanted, she made sure I finished school. Mm. Um, and she wasn't, because I like wanted to leave early when I was like 16. I had already had like, record label interest at that point and she was like nope you're staying to 18 wow. and I was like okay do you remember how your first project got out there like how did people find you I think were you like submitting stuff to blogs or how no I wasn't like I, I had like I think at that point I'd build up to like 9,000 followers on YouTube that's pretty good yeah wow, which, back then yeah which was good it wasn't like loads but it was good and I got really I, I think I guess I was just like accidentally good at social media because mm. I was like just being myself and people like found me relatable in some way. Were and you talking like before your songs or was it like other yeah so like you put out vlogs no too? like before um, before I put out the first EP and I was just doing covers on, on YouTube like um, I like I remember when we like put it up pre-order the first EP like I was like if you send me a screenshot that you've pre-ordered then I can like put your name in the thank yous page of the oh, that's so digital booklet yeah. and that because that was something that I like just wanted to do because I 
I was trying to think like what would I want my favorite artists to do for their fans oh, like for so me smart. and I was yeah. like that's what I would want um, so I did that and then I think from that we got like a ton of pre-orders which meant that when the EP came out it went straight into the iTunes top 10 oh. this is when iTunes was still a thing <laughs> when people were still like buying music mm -hmm. which is crazy um, and then because it went straight into the top 10 like a lot of people saw it and were like who the fuck is this you yeah. know so um yeah it was just like a really crazy beginning mm -hmm. um for that ep how did you make the music though like how did you meet the producers and everything um there was like this one producer who again had like contacted me through seeing some youtube videos and um he liked me and said he wanted to work with me um and I didn't have any money at the time mm -hmm. so the first EP I like wrote on my own but because I couldn't pay him anything I just gave him a split of the oh writing. that's so smart now you figure out everything <laughs> well, that's so impressive. I like literally didn't know what I was doing but I was like look I have no money I'm like 15 years old <laughs> um you know if you think the songs are good enough I can just give you a split of the yeah. writing and he agreed to do it. So oh. I think we like paid him later after we like made some money because I was like, that's not really fair. But um, but yeah, so we, I mean, I started working with him and I did, I did all three of my EPs with him mm -hmm. and a, a, some of my album too. So mm -hmm. that's like a partnership that went on, yeah. which was really nice. And then did you know how Island Records found you back then? Um, I don't know exactly how they found me. Um, but I remember the the guy who signed me, um, Alistair, who's still a good friend of mine, um, came down to one of the very early shows and I knew there was like an A&R coming and I was super nervous. Mm -hmm. um, but I met him afterwards and, and he was really nice. Um, and I, it, was, it wasn't, I didn't actually sign until like two years okay. later. Um, and we had like a few labels interested, but he'd been there from the very beginning. Oh, that's why I like, decided to sign yeah, with him. Yeah, really, I really liked him. Mm -hmm. And we had like a really good friendship. So yeah. it just felt right. What was it like for you though, like being so, like doing music independently for like all these years and then all of a sudden like needing to work with a record label or like wanting to? It was such a huge shift, honestly. Yeah. Like I think I'd build it up in my mind so much because I, I like read things when I was a kid and I just convinced myself that like getting signed to a major record label was like the be all and end all of life. Mm. <laughs> so it was like the day I signed, I remember thinking I was like, oh, like, I did it, you know, like yeah. I, I, I achieved it, like I ticked it off. And I had no idea that that was just like the beginning of what was going to be like the hardest time of my life mm -hmm. and like actually doing much harder work because like you have to learn how to work with a team and like oh, yeah. you're not in control of everything anymore mm -hmm. and like it was a really big shift and like one that I probably wasn't ready for and I was probably like a bit young for in in retrospect but um it was such a like learning experience mm -hmm. like to go through that so young and and see that side of the music industry Mm -hmm. I think I just like, unfortunately, I was just like really young and probably wasn't mm -hmm. ready for it. In what ways? I think I just didn't know enough about who I was as a person. Oh, who I were was they as like molding you into a certain artist? Yeah, because or? like obviously they they want it to work and be successful, yeah. and it's like a business thing. Um, so I got pushed and pulled in a few different directions. I like. They started putting me in, in writing sessions with other people, which I'd never really done before. Mm. Um, and I had to adjust to that. And I like thought they, they wanted me to be this like pop star. So I kind of started writing differently. And like, I think I just like lost so much of myself in that process from trying to like please everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, like what happened eventually was that it, the whole thing felt so confused and like, disorientated that it like didn't really work out in the way that we all wanted it to mm -hmm. and also impacted your mental health right yeah it was like it was a pretty dark time like before my album came out and um, 
the radio stations in the UK wouldn't play me and that was like a really big deal at the but time. why wouldn't they? Because like, I mean the UK is small and they like, we only basically have like one radio station oh. that plays new music so and they can't play everything. Mm -hmm. So it happened that at the time like it was like too full and there wasn't like a space for me mm -hmm. to film. Um, and that meant that like we couldn't really like expand the project outside of the fan base that I already had. Mm -hmm. So it was um, it was hard like because of that the the money tap kind of got turned off and like I had to cancel my album tour, I had to cancel all my festivals that year and all my promo and I basically just like for the six months before my album came out. I just sat in my flat doing absolutely nothing, which is really damaging for anyone's mental mm -hmm. health. Um, but especially like on the basis that I thought that was gonna be like the most exciting time of my life mm -hmm. and I'd build it up so much in my own head. Um, and then it just like wasn't. I think mm -hmm. I was just like so bummed about that. Um, so yeah, I was I I was on antidepressants during that time and I was feeling everything like pretty heavily um, and I just like wasn't happy at all and I knew that I needed to make like a huge change in my life um, and I actually ended up making like like four like huge changes all in like one month yeah to get out of that cycle but one of those things was like quitting being an artist I say quitting <laughs> like, <here> I am. <laughs> um, but in my mind at the time, I was I was done. I was like done forever. So you cancelled the deal, or how? Yeah, well, I I called my um, I called my A and R, and I said, look, like, thank you guys so much for everything that you've done, but I'm really not happy anymore. And here's a list of reasons why. And like, I'd really, I'm sure that this is the way it's going anyway. But I'm I like I want us to not work together anymore, but you know, end it on good terms. Mm -hmm. And I think that we did that. And he let me go, you know, which was like, honestly the best thing that they could have done for me at that time. So I'm really grateful for that. And they didn't like keep me in some like weird mm -hmm. contract where I was like yeah. tied into like another three albums or something. Mm -hmm. um, Cause so, it yeah. really wasn't working like for either of us. So. Mm -hmm. so outside of the radio play, like what made you like get disconnected from everything? I think like, I had to put out some music that I like wasn't that proud of and that oh. I didn't really like and I just like it I built it up so much in my head and it just like none of it was what I imagined it to be and that was like the, the mm. biggest shock to me um, I don't know I think it was just like a combination of things and I'd like I was on like I'd gone through a couple different managers and I hadn't found the right management relationship and like just loads of things that contributed to it yeah. and it all kind of just like hit me at once mm -hmm. um, and you wanted to be an air hostess yeah. <laughs> yeah so I was like I was done with music forever and um, I was I decided that the thing I was going to do was to be a flight attendant mm -hmm. so I started like applying online for British <laughs> Airways and it's like a really long form. It's like six pages long. Mm -hmm. And I was like four pages in and I like filled everything out. And then they were like, um, if you have any visible tattoos on your oh. arms or face or anything, then you can't apply. And I have like two tiny tattoos know on my arms. Damn. And I just had like a mental breakdown. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, like I've fucked music, and now I can't even be a fucking air hostess because I got these tattoos. I can't get a real job. No one's going to employ me. And I was just like, literally freaking out, like being so melodramatic in my <laughs> usual way. But um, so that didn't work out. It was like a short-lived dream. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily, I I got an email from someone. Um, because I'd like, I'd been doing a couple of sessions still that year, and I got an email from someone saying that Kylie Minogue wanted to use one of my songs. Yeah, um, crazy. And um, I, my, I like grew up listening to Kylie. That was like a huge deal. And the song actually ended up not coming out, but that the guy who emailed me is like my manager now. 
mm -hmm. and he basically was asking me, he told me about the thing with Kylie and then he was asking me if I was managed and I like just left my management company because I didn't think I was going to do it. And uh, I was like, no, but I'm like not looking to be in music anymore. Um, and he basically pestered me to meet him until I did. And then when I met him, I liked him so much and he, he was saying like, I think you should just try being a songwriter for other people. Mm. And I was like, do you know what? I can't be a flight attendant. I have nothing else to do, so okay. Um, and we started like on a management trial situation and I started writing for other people. Yeah, who, who did you write for at that time or throughout? I mean, I literally started from the bottom. So I was just, I was working in the UK with like completely unknown artists, like just right at the beginning of their careers. And I was literally working like six days a week. Wow. Um, sometimes doing like double sessions. I was just figuring it out, but I started to like really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And um, and I loved doing it. And I met through that process, some of the writers and producers that I work with on my own artist project now. So I mm -hmm. feel like I like needed to do that. Yeah. But gradually I started working with like some bigger artists and I met, um, I met people that I have like a real connection with and like kept working with continuously. Um, one of those people is Fletcher, who's oh, based yeah. here in LA. Um, we started writing together and I just like love her and think she's amazing. Um, did you write with Lil Mix or? I didn't write with Lil Mix, yeah. but I did a lot of stuff like for them, like yeah. their label do like camps mm -hmm. for them. And um, I did a lot of those and like got into like girl group mode, which yeah. was really fun. Who, who, uh, uh, who else um, did you write for? And then I did, I was working and I still work a lot with this girl called Rina Sawayama. Oh yeah. Who's like a British Japanese artist. She, I think she's amazing. I think she's like the next Gaga. Mm -hmm. like, she's she, so stylish Yeah, too. she's amazing. And she just like, she treats her gigs like I saw her I've seen her play like 300 cap venues yeah. but she treats them like arena shows like oh. she does like costume changes yeah. costume changes she, does, she has like backup dances I'm like oh one inspiration like I could never do that but no. do your thing mm -hmm. um, she's amazing and um, and I started coming out to LA too and, and yeah. doing, doing riding trips out here which is nice because there's like a lot more like pop music here which mm -hmm. is what I really love. Yeah, and where do you think I your confidence back to be an artist again? I think writing for other people made me a better writer because mm -hmm. I had to like learn how to do different styles and I had to learn how to collaborate more and um, and I could just like put on a different hat every day and be whoever I wanted to be, which was really fun. So I think that really helped um, and then when I wrote Psycho, which was my first single back, um, I wrote that song like for pitch, like oh, to pitch okay. out to other artists. Um, and but there was like a part of me that was like, oh, I, I just like don't know if I want to give this song away because mm -hmm. it felt really personal and honest, and yeah, I just like it felt like it was really me. So I called my managers one day and I was like, guys, like. I understand that you like didn't sign up for this, like you know, you just wanted to manage me as a writer, but I think I want to release Psycho. Yeah. And they were like, oh my god, we've been waiting for you to oh. say this. Um, and they were actually like way more excited than I was. <laughs> so I think that was like a good a good boost of confidence from them. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just like I knew that I knew that like the the core of who I am is like being an artist that's what I wanted to do since I was a kid and as much as I love like just being a songwriter I think I've always had that like little nagging feeling to like be on stage and be performing and express myself like in my own way through my own voice and I think it I think it was always gonna come back to me eventually I would I'm definitely more confident now than I was three years ago but I, I definitely still have like a lot of doubts mm. all the time um but it's just like, it's easier to push them down now and like yeah. push out the voices in my, in my own head yeah. that are like, you're not good enough or whatever. So 
so yeah, I think yeah. it's just from being older as well. Like, mm-hmm. I was so young before. Yeah. I was like, I've just turned 18 when I signed <laughs> my deal. <laughs> Which at the time, I, I really thought I had my shit together. But now looking back, I was like, no, I, I was so, so young. <laughs> How did your tour with Sasha Sloan come about? Um, I'm a huge Sasha Sloan fan. Same. I think she's so amazing. And when she announced the tour, I took a screenshot and I sent it to my manager and I was like you know the little emoji that's like where it's like mm. <laughs> that emoji um, I just sent it to him and, and he came back and he was like oh I actually know Sasha's manager so let me see oh my gosh and I was like no way and then literally like a week later he called me and was like yeah Sasha would love to have you on the tour and it turns out that she had been like a mutual fan oh, as well no and I just didn't know so it really worked out mm-hmm. and then um, I w- we hadn't met before the tour so I was like really nervous whether we were going to get on but she's literally like the coolest yeah, she's girl so cool. ever she's so chill and nice and like we both smoke weed and we both just like want to chill mm-hmm. so it was like it was a good vibe like just like a really good hang and yeah. like it was really nice to learn from her as well and talk to her about how she started out and knowing that she goes through all the same shit that I do with like writing sessions and being an artist and being a woman in the music industry mm-hmm. and um, yeah it was it was really really fun mm-hmm. and I've never done a US tour before so <laughs> done <Yeah. Checked. laughs> and can you tell me about you opening for Taylor Swift yes this is actually my favorite story to tell oh, <laughs> this is the one that I like will tell till the day I die and my friends like so sick of it <laughs> I'll just like keep riding that wave forever. But, um, yeah, it was it was so like weird but amazing. But I before 1989 came out, um, it was like a week before it came out, and I tweeted something about like being really excited for it. Mm-hmm. And she quote retweeted me. <laughs> oh. And she said, so she was like, "This is so sweet." By the way, I love Fool's EP which was the name of my first EP. And mm. I was like, no fucking way. Yeah, you were like 16. And I was, I was like, I was on my it. couch at the time and it was like one in the morning and I was watching Harry Potter alone and I was eating um, Nutella out of the jar. Mm. <laughs> it was like a really dark moment. And I just saw my phone like, just like start flashing, like really intensely, yeah. like getting loads of notifications. I was like, what is happening? Turns out that like Taylor Swift had had tweeted me about my EP. I was like, oh my god. Um, literally cried. Called my called my publisher at like one in the morning. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe this happened. I'm so sorry for waking you up, but like, I need to tell you. And then, yeah, like um, three days later, I got an email saying Taylor's invited you to be one of the openers for the London show on the tour. Yeah. And That's crazy. Um, I was obviously like, yes. Um, so it was like there was like that one was in like a it was in Hyde Park Mm -hmm. so it was was like kind of like a festival vibe so there was like a few different openers but like I mean one of the openers was like Ellie Goulding oh my gosh so it was like a crazy lineup and then just like me Um, (laughs) and uh, we we did the show it was great we watched Taylor she was amazing and then I was like hanging around backstage after because everyone had like a trailer for their dressing mm-hmm. room, but then obviously Taylor had like her own little section that was yeah. like protected by security and stuff. And I just said to one of the security guards, I was like, I know this is really cheeky, but like she tweeted me <laughs> a few <laughs> months ago and like I opened the show and I just like want to say thank you. Um, and he went and got the tour manager to like confirm my name and like show yeah. my ID and stuff. And then I, he just took me into her like little area. Mm. And she came running out of her trailer and she was like, Lauren! And I was like, Taylor! <laughs> and we like hugged. And then she took me into the trailer and there was like just a ton of like Victoria's Secret models in there. Emma oh yeah, because she's friends with them. Yeah, Emma Watson was in there. That's insane. Gwyneth Paltrow was in there. What? Like I was literally like freaking out. And she started like introducing me to her friends. She was like, this is Lauren, like she's one of my favorite new songwriters. And I was literally like, what the fuck is happening right now? Like, yeah. I, I just couldn't believe what was happening, but she was so nice. Mm-hmm. And we like talked for ages and we like did 
you know, she does those like meet and greets yeah. with her fans. I did that with her and like hung out with her afterwards. And like, she was just so cool, like really down yeah. to earth, but like also just like a very magical being. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so tall, yeah. so, so tall. So um, yeah, that was like one of the best days ever. Mm -hmm. was, was fully amazing. Wow. Like and I said, I'll talk about it till the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> on my on my tombstone, it'll say like opened for Taylor Swift once. <laughs> and can you talk a bit about um, tobacco in my sheets and the inspiration? Yeah, sure. Um, so tobacco in my sheets is the newest single that came out, and it's probably like one of the most, probably like the most personal yeah. song I've ever written. So personal. It's, um, it's about, I was saying, my parents split up when I was really young. So it was just like, mostly just me, my mom and my brother when we mm -hmm. were growing up. And she was amazing. But after like, my first proper heartbreak, which was like the same time around when uh, I left my label and I left my management oh. and I quit everything. It yeah. all happened in like one month. Damn. So I was having like, a really hard time and that's when I like, started like, living my life and like doing everything that all my friends did when they were 18 mm -hmm. so I like start like I like tried drugs for the first time mm -hmm. and I like started getting drunk more and like mm -hmm. just like living a bit more recklessly and um my I was at a family party and uh, I w my mom like caught me smoking a joint mm -hmm. <laughs> she was actually really cool about it. She was like, let me join in. She was like drunk. Um, I was like, no. <laughs> and uh, but I was thinking about that afterwards and I was thinking like, oh, like how would my mum feel about how I've been living, you know, yeah. for the past year. But then I started thinking like, well, she probably went through the exact same thing because I've seen her go through her own heartbreak. Oh, yeah. You know, watching my parents put up. And I was like, I woke up, I woke up one morning and there was literally tobacco in my sheets. Yeah. And I started singing it as like a joke. I was like, there's tobacco in my sheets. My mother won't be proud. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I just had that first verse for ages and didn't know what to do with it. Um, and then like a month later, I wrote the chorus. And then like four months after that, I finished it with my friend Johnny, who I like write a lot of my songs with. Mm -hmm. um, so it took ages to come about. Like I wanted every lyric to be super personal and like be perfect. Um, but I'm like really proud of it. And yeah. Really happy that I wrote it because that was like the first song I wrote for me as an artist again. Mm -hmm. Which is why it's like so personal because obviously I could have never pitched that oh, to another yeah. artist. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like it feels it feels like the most me thing mm -hmm. I've ever put out, which is like a really exciting feeling. Yeah. What does love mean to you? Love. Yeah. Wow, what a question. Um, <laughs> I think love is like just a feeling that like takes over your whole body and like when you like love someone or love something like you don't think about all the like other things like all the negatives mm -hmm. just like a focused on the thing that you love and like and just like being with that thing yeah so like whether it's a relationship or like being in love with a person you just like you just want to be with that person you don't you kind of like don't give a fuck about all the negative qualities about them and mm -hmm. it's the same with like loving music or whatever like there are so many negatives that come with being a musician but when you really love it you can just like see past all of them um so i guess yeah mm -hmm. i guess that's what i would say last question what do you want to be remembered for Ooh, i think i just want to like if, if i'm like one person's favorite song or favorite artist or mm -hmm. like if I like had a song that helped someone through a time um, I really don't care about like being famous or anything like that I just having my 
the, the thing that I create, having that connect with like just one person in the way that like I've connected with my favorite songs, yeah. that's like, that's all I ever wanted as an artist and like that's all I continue to want. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just like, yeah, just like that. And yeah. hopefully just being like a chill person. Yeah. Hopefully being like a nice person. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Bye guys.